Joining me now, trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris to talk more about this case. Uh, Misty, good morning to you. I want to rewind just a little bit. Did she have to go to Italy to face these charges? Was she required to do so? I'd be pretty weary to head back there after everything she'd been uh, through. I can imagine that she was, and she said so much on her Twitter account where she said she's stepping back into the courtroom, which were essentially the darkest days of her life. Of her life. So, uh, yes, she did have to go back and attend. She did testify, and she testified about how the police actually coerced that statement. It was after hours and hours and hours of being interrogated without an attorney, without an interpreter, that she was exhausted. And so the statement that uh, accused the, the individual in this case was actually coerced. So it was very central to her defense in this slander charge to actually testify. So when it comes to the psychology of false confection, confessions, which it appears this was, how do you advise a client in a situation like this? Well, number one is you always want to have a lawyer present. And that was actually the central issue in Amanda Knox's case that resulted in the overturning of her convictions, that the statements that she initially made to police were actually, uh, the, the court had found that they had to be disregarded, that they couldn't be considered in a courtroom because she didn't have a lawyer and she did not have an interpreter. So the general principles are the same, to not make any statements without your lawyer present. And any defense attorney will tell you when there are statements made to police, they're always scrutinized in order to make a determination about whether or not they were made under extreme emotional distress or, or something like that. So there's a bunch of evidentiary rules in the United States and also in Italy uh, about whether or not those statements can be thrown out of court from an evidentiary perspective, which is ultimately what happened here. I'm wondering if she won't face jail time for this and she wouldn't if found guilty, which has happened, what was the purpose of these legal proceedings if nothing really comes of it or changes anything? So the conviction was overturned. The prosecutors decided to retry the case, and it was overturned based on new laws and the finding that those police statements were getting thrown out. And Amanda Knox wanted to clear her name finally from all of this because her conviction relating to the murder had been overturned. This was the only piece that was left without certainty. And so prosecutors still went forward because keep in mind, the standard is different. Overturning the murder conviction and clearing her name on the murder is different than the slander against the bartender who did suffer severe consequences, uh, reputational aspects that were negative for him, spent two weeks in jail based on her statement. So it's two different legal standards. But what will come of this is while there is no jail time, she will be required to pay his legal fees and a sum of damages that will be determined by the court. So the court has 60 days to say why they came to this conclusion, to, to document their opinion, and to also identify what those damages are. Keep in mind though, Marnie, she can still appeal this this particular conviction. And then after that, damages are determined. Anything else on the legal road for her as it pertains to the situation in Italy, or is this it? Well, if she decides to appeal, then we're back into the process of that appellate decision. If the case were to be overturned, and again, the standards are pretty much the same. It's not that uh, the, the, an appellate court looks at something and says they got it wrong. They look at what evidence came into the courtroom, what testimony was elicited, was something overly prejudicial, did something come in that shouldn't have come in from an evidentiary perspective? So if she appeals and if the appellate court overturns this conviction, we can find ourselves right back in this courtroom with another retrial. So it just depends on where uh, the defense goes. Do they appeal the conviction? And I don't think they're gonna make that assessment, at least according to her lawyers, until they see the rationale behind the opinion, which we'll get in 60 days. Yeah, what a case. All right. Well, not over yet. Trial attorney, legal analyst, Misty Maris, thank you. You helped me understand it uh, so much better. Appreciate your time. Thank you.